What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going over another leveling build in our leveling build series. We're gonna have one for each class, as you guys can see here. Me and my community have really been working hard on coming up in theory crafting with a lot of different builds and just different ways to make something really cool to level up in in Diablo 4 on launch for anybody at all skill levels. So today we're gonna be going over my Twisted Blades Rogue build, this is probably one of my favorite builds that we have made together, and I really wish I could start it at launch, but I can't. So to note, we have two things that I wanna bring up, guys. Down in the description, you will have a um, spreadsheet <clears throat> that you guys will see here, which will have all of the information that you need to level up the build. This is our Druid one, for example, for each level, the um, skills that you're gonna use, and any modification that you're gonna have, as well as your renown points that you're gonna need to spend on specific skills. So all this stuff will be down in the description below. Next, I wanna note, and we gotta make sure that everybody understands this, uh, with our aspects, okay, all of the aspects in all of our leveling builds are going to have codexes. Codexes are different because these are ones that you can get from dungeons. So they're guaranteed legendary powers that you can get. And I wanted to make sure that every build has a legendary power that you're going to be able to use specific for the build. So that's why we don't have any other legendaries because those are completely random. And we want to make sure that we have stuff that's going to really make the build thrive. And that way you're not sitting there relying on finding a certain legendary. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so with Twisted Blades, guys, it's pretty standard. We've seen this for the last two months during all of the betas, and Twisted Blade being one of the most powerful builds or at least skills in all of Diablo up to this point. Yes, the Rogue did suffer a few nerfs, but Twisting Blades was definitely not one of them. So let's get right into the build. So we are going to be doing Puncture. Puncture is pretty standard on Rogue, especially for the a melee version. Um, Puncture is going to throw sh uh, blades a short distance, which is really cool. And every third cast, we're going to get them to be slowed. This build is going to be all about critting as well as doing crowd control effects. We need our enemies to be crowd controlled, really to deal the maximum amount of damage in this build. Okay, so we got Puncture that's going to slow people and critical strikes always slow. When we come down to enhance, we gain energy when... Um, Puncture damages crowd controlled enemies. Then we have fundamental puncture, which is pretty standard. Puncture now throws three uh, blades in a spread. Each dealing damage, but hitting with at least two blades makes an enemy vulnerable. This is huge to help us deal a lot of damage, okay? Next, of course, we have twisting blades. We're putting five points in twisting blades. This is by far one of the strongest skills in the game, at least up to this point until things get changed. Um, we're gonna be able to impale people with blades and then after um, 1.5 seconds, the blades are going to return to us in dealing damage to people as the blades pass through. So then we got enhanced twisting blades deals 30% more damage while they're returning. And then, so I want I want to preface this. At, typically, people take advanced twisting blades. Uh, so when they return, your cooldowns get reset up to three seconds. This is very strong. I think in the early stages of the game, though, I'm going to take improvised twisting blades because enemies become dazed while they're impaled. So this is also gonna give us a huge crowd control factor. I think later on, this might be fine, or if you really wanted to, you just start with cooldowns to help get through the game faster, and then you go to improvise. Um, I really like improvise. The cooldown aspect isn't really something I care about too, too much, but it is a very powerful thing. Most people do advanced facing blades, but don't sleep on, sleep on this one that makes them dazed. Okay, then we have Sturdy. We gain 4% close damage reduction, which is really good. Rogues are pretty much glass cannons, guys. It's very hard for us to have damage reduction in any case, but Sturdy is one of them, and I only have one point in because we are going to be very fast. So that in combination with crowd controlling enemies, we should be able to move pretty fairly, pretty fairly, pretty freely and not take a whole lot of damage. Um, and then we have Siphoning Strikes. This is going to be our for our sustain guys. We heal 3% of our maximum life when we crit a close enemy. So as we're continuing to crit and we're moving through and critting and critting, we this should help uh, have a lot of sustain and keep us alive. Next, we have dash. Now, I want to point out here that I used to have shadow step and I, most people are going to run both, Can, especially considering shadow step is the only movement skill the rogue has that gives us... Um, uh, unstoppable, but I took that off. I like dash much better than shadow step in this case 
because when we dash forward, we're slashing enemies, but then with enhanced dash, they take more crit strike damage because we uh, want to be critically striking. And then dash is going to slow them. And then if they're already slowed, they're going to be dazed. So this is just more crowd control, okay? The additional one for crowd control damage to reset this is okay, but I want to guarantee that I'm always crowd controlling somewhere, whether it's my uh, basic attack or a agility move. So we, we're, we're sticking with discipline dash. And then we have three points in weapon mastery. We gain bonuses when attacking with uh, weapon types. All of this is really, really good. So we're going to be attacking with swords and daggers mostly. So we're going to be able to do even more damage to the healthier enemies and then just increase damage overall if you're using swords. All right, then we come down here for agile. Using a cooldown increases your dodge chance by 12%. This is going to help us keep alive or help us stay alive. Almost all of our abilities are on cooldown except for twisting blades and puncture. So this is going to be up pretty much nonstop. Next, we have Exploit. We deal 18% increased damage to healthy and injured enemies. Very, very strong on both ends. And then we have three points into Malice where we deal even more damage against vulnerable enemies. So not only are we going to be really, really fast, we're going to deal damage against healthy enemies, but they're going to be CC'd and then we're going to deal even more damage to vulnerable enemies. So it's fantastic. Then of course, what's a rogue build without Dark Shroud, guys? So Dark Shroud is going to give us our other form of damage reduction, which is good. We get five of these. And then we have Dark Shroud, which has a 10% chance to not be consumed, which is good. And then this is where we're going to have a split too. And I really encourage you to try either one of these. In the early stages of the game, until we get to the later stages, I think while having, having four active shadows is pretty easy to have. So the 8% critical strike chance is very good. I think though, once we get, you know, level 40, level 50, and start to trickle into the end game, I think you have to go subverting Dark Shroud. So that way, while this is on, we get damage reduction, but then we move 20% faster. So in the early stages, I'm taking countering because we just want to kill stuff. But later, I'm taking subverting because it's going to be very hard to keep four active shadows up all the time. Um, in the later stages of the game, at the higher difficulties. So the monsters are going to be smarter, so it's going to be really hard to keep those active shadows. Um, next, we have po our precision imbuement. Imbued skills gain 9% increased critical strike chance, which is huge. Now into our two bread and butter skills. Okay, this is the first time that I really have tested uh, two different imbuements. And I think it's going to be very, very strong. We saw throughout the server slam that poison imbuement is very strong. So we're going to go with this down to enhance. So they, the poison duration is increased. And then we're doing mixed poison imbuement on a lucky hit. Imbued skills have a 30% chance to apply double poison damage. This is very, very good. And not only against multiple enemies, but mainly against bosses and single target damage. This is huge against elites and bosses. Next, we have five points into cold imbuement. And this is why, this is our main CC. So we imbue our weapons with cold, excuse me, with frigid energies. Our next two uh, imbued skills deal cold damage and chill for 35% per hit. Okay, keep that in mind, 35%. Then we have Lucky Hit. Cold skills have a chance to make them vulnerable, so we deal more damage. And then cold skills have 20% damage against CC'd enemies, and then double it against Frozen. So it's 40% against Frozen. Now, 35% per hit is very good. So as we continue to hit an enemy and they become chilled, the more times we hit that enemy, they become frozen. So chill already CCs them, and then we make them frozen. The reason that cold imbuement is so good on twisting blades is because it's the per hit. So when we have the ability that makes this spin and we're dealing all this damage, anything that kind of rapidly the hits enemies with that 35% is going to make them chill pretty much all the time and if not freeze them. So twisting blades is very good for this. Rapid fire is very good for this. A barrage is very, very good for this. And even flurry is very good for this. So that's why we have five points in the cold imbuement. Then we're gonna go with Frigid Finesse. <clears throat> you deal 15% increased damage to chilled enemies. This bonus increases at 30% against Frozen. So wow, now we're dealing even more damage against more CC'd and chilled enemies, and then we do up to 30% against Frozen enemies. Wow, let's blow some stuff up. Now down here to Intervention, Lucky Hit, we have a 30% chance to gain eight energy. I really like this because our Lucky Hit chance is pretty high. 
Then we have adrenaline rush. While moving, we gain more energy regeneration to help uh, us nonstop do twisting blades. And then we have haste. While we're above 50% of our max energy, we gain 15% move speed. And then when we're below, we gain more attack speed, which will help regenerate our energy even faster. So that way we can keep twisting blades up. Now down to probably my favorite ability that the rogue has with this, and this is close quarters combat. Close combat quarters combat is tricky, so I'll make sure I go over this in, in good detail. So at least this is how I believe this works. So damaging a close enemy with a marksman skill or a cutthroat skill, each grant 10% attack speed, okay, for eight seconds. While both attack speeds are active, we deal 20% more damage against crowd controlled enemies. So, marksman skill, cutthroat skill, all up close. So we hit somebody with, uh, we hit somebody with puncture, then we hit somebody with twisting blades, and now we have 20% more attack speed, and now we deal 20% more damage when they're CC'd. This is super, super good. So I absolutely love this ability. So. That's why we want everything CC'd. We got a high crit chance and we're going to be able to just do massive damage and freeze everything. So we're going to be able to move pretty freely without taking a lot of damage. So let's get into our gills and gill, our gears and skills. So our course with any twisting blades build, we're taking combo points. Um, now that we have access to preparation, this is actually really, really good, um, but we don't have an ultimate. So that's why we're not using it. Combo points is very, very good for twisting blades. Um, with puncture so that way we just do a crap ton of damage now into our aspects as i said before guys we're only having aspects in here that you can get from dungeons which is very important so first and foremost we're doing energizing aspect damaging an elite with a basic skill generates more energy so this is huge against bosses and elite packs this allows us to be able to just twisting blades non-stop uh, next is the main codex that you need Blade Dancer's Aspect, Twisting Blades Orbit for a short time after they return to you, dealing damage uh, of Twisting Blades uh, when they return, damage per hit, and then based on the distance, they do even more damage. So this is the main power, and what's so great about it is, is you can get it from a dungeon. Oh, and guess what? Because it's in Skosglin, you get this in Act 2. You get this a power in Act 2, which is crazy so you're going through this you hit level 25 you're going into act two first thing you do is go get this power and then you literally start slaying so those are the aspects guys that's the specialization with combo points this is our entire skill tree it's a very 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 strong build um, but that is the build guys let me know what you guys think down in the comments below about this Twisting Blades build. It is a very, very, very strong build with the two imbuements. Um, I'm very, very excited about this. If you really wanted two small changes, you could dump this for 30%, which is good, and pump two more points into Poison Imbuement to do even more damage. Totally up to you. I like the five just because we're gonna be doing Cold Imbuement more of a focus than poison until we fight a boss maybe when you go fight a boss you take points off and you put it like you drop this to one and then you just put this up to five against the boss so i would probably do that but like the video guys if you guys did enjoy it comment down below what do you guys think about this and any other builds and stuff that you would like to see or maybe me and my community go over or whatever you guys want to see please let me know join the discord we talk a lot about stuff in theory crafting so that'll be down in the description below and as, I, and as always, guys, stay gaming. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.